everybody. Welcome back to Black Spring. I hope everybody's doing well today. Now, first, we have a lot of things going on. We have the impeachment, closing remarks and closing arguments happening right now. We also have, of course, we have a very hyperbolic Democrats taking the floor using words like grave, abuse of power, cover up, corruption, insidious. I mean, it's kind of like hyperbole at its worst. But just when you think it's worse, I mean, you get, you think that's the worst thing can happen. You can have Democrats whining and whimpering and pandering all over the place. But not to be not so fast, it could actually get a lot worse. So in that case, I'd like to take you to a clip with some commentary from the Republican Party. It will come from Devin Nunes and his thoughts on a Trump acquittal. So thank everybody for being here with me. So great to be with you. We got an indication from Senator Lamar Alexander of Tennessee last night late that we're not going to get witnesses in the Senate portion of this of proceeding. And basically, there's nothing left. There's going to be a vote. The president's going to be acquitted. So why is it continuing exactly? Do you know? Well, they have to actually get to the point of where they actually vote to acquit, which I guess right. is going to occur on Wednesday. So they had to vote on the rules for that. But I actually have some bad news for you tonight, Tucker, on Friday okay. night. I know, you, I know you don't want the bad news, but... I'm used the to president's it. going to be acquitted, but the problem is this isn't going to end. Like, I, I just can't imagine that Adam Schiff, after three and a half years of this nonsense, and Jerry Nadler are not going to continue this, right? They're going to go back and they're going to subpoena John Bolton. We're going to have the same exact thing that you've been seeing for the last three and a half years. I, I just think you should prepare. We thought once Mueller collapsed completely, we thought, okay, we're going to get on to business. And then out of nowhere, this Ukraine hoax appeared. And look, this really is a hoax. This was Adam Schiff and his staff concocting this all together with people that all know each other. All these people know each other that concocted this stupid Ukraine hoax that we've been dealing with for the last week in the Senate. So anyway, bad news for you tonight. I bet even after the acquittal, we're going to be working on this. So, so since you're an elected official and you know a lot about policy but also politics, is there any evidence that this works? I mean, my read on it is the candidates who win are the ones that speak to the issues that people really care about. They don't care about this demonstrably. So why are Democrats continuing to do this? Well, I described it uh, earlier this week as the Democratic Party is like the dog that caught the car. And now yeah. they're, they've been promising all this crazy stuff. And now they're going to get somebody who's not even a Democrat, Bernie Sanders, as their nominee. Uh, a, a month ago. I would have said, nah, you know, Bernie's going to get second or third, probably right. not going to win. I mean, he's winning in, in every state, including California, which is the big prize, which is essentially a month away. Yes. And he's winning in Iowa. I mean, this could be, if, if Bernie wins on Monday night, uh, you, you have an entire takeover by the extreme left of the historic Democratic Party. It, it's no longer going to cease to exist. It's going to be the Socialist Party. Well, so can I ask you another political question? So this is essentially a replay of what happened with Donald Trump and the Republican Party. The establishment hated him. They tried to rig the system to prevent him from becoming the nominee, and it didn't work. The Democrats are trying the same thing. They're talking about tampering with delegates at the, at the convention now. Will that work? I, well, I, I think there's a, there's a big difference between Trump and Bernie Sanders here. Well, okay? of course so there is. Tr Trump, and, and I mean just in the politics of this, Bernie Sanders is a socialist. I mean, the guy spent his honeymoon in the Soviet Union. Yes. Right. Donald Trump had a you know, he had his own brand of politics that I think caught everybody off guard. But he does believe in a few important things. Right. He, he wants to. He's been very clear. He was against the Iraq war from the very beginning. He wants he wants to bring the troops home as much as he can. Uh, he also wanted to redo trade deals, all, all things that people, including myself, were very skeptical of if he could actually deliver on some of this. But I think. Despite all the craziness and for three and a half years, well, really since the end of 2015, Donald Trump and his campaign uh, being under investigation by the feds, the Clinton campaign, yeah. uh, the Democrats in the House, uh, despite all of that, 
the guy is defying the odds. I mean, I would have never thought that we could have not only rewrote NAFTA, but actually passed it. It was one of the most popular trade agreements ever passed in the, in the House of Representatives and the Senate. I, I mean, it's amazing what he's actually accomplishing. I, I remember very uh, Despite everything. Yeah, and in the end, that's I think I think that's what matters. Congressman, thanks so much for coming on tonight. Okay. So there you have you have the commentary from from Nunez on the obsession, the ins, the the ins, ins, incessant idea of impeachment and just more 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 jabs at President Donald Trump but I'd be remiss not to mention this other character other figure which is Michael Bloomberg now Michael Bloomberg seems to be you might call him a bit of a wild card but I'd like to quote him quote if you share my belief in opportunity for all and not just for a few and if you are ready to clean out the Oval Office and get things done, then welcome to Bloomberg 2020. End quote. Mike Bloomberg. Well, with that said, when I think of Michael Bloomberg, I think of a fully loaded term called globalization. And Michael Bloomberg is what I refer to as a capital is the capitalist, the capital elite, okay, he's got the cash, you know, he can, he can spend a lot of money on anti-Trump campaigns, but he's also going to be in the tank pretty much for the climate change, or the climate hoax, or the climate, climate faith, he's going to be in the tank for all of these things, because guess why, these things are profitable, these things are profitable, and they are very much what the globalists want. So when we talk about globalists, I offer you a definition of globalism. And it, actually there's four parts to globalism, which capitalism and, of course, a capitalist, of course, plays a role in it. So one, you need the four radical changes in the world system. Number one would be the destabilization of and removal of sovereignty from Western nation states. Two, the establishment of essentially fascist world government under the direct control of the capitalist elite. So let's just stop right there. If we talk about the destabilization or removal of sovereignty from Western nation states, what would we, what would we be talking about? Okay, so sovereignty would be open borders, we would have, of course, mass migration. We would have also we'd be, it'd be one world one world government is basically we'd be surrendering, giving up our rights, giving up our giving up our freedoms is generally what is what sovereignty means to me. It means you're you're we're no longer self governing. We're being governed by those who think that they know best, i.e. the Democrat Socialist Party. And this particular guy is, would be a tyrannical figure. I mean, he already has his ideas on what he wants to do with the Second Amendment. You know, calling these things gun safety. You know, trying to convince everybody that the world, that they put our safety in your, put, our, put your trust and your safety in our hands. And, and you know, we'll be... Yeah, you know, it's it's just it's one 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 more step closer to police state, or you know, we we've, we've seen historically when the guns are taken away, whether it be through Mao or whether it be through Hitler or whether it be the Soviet Union, we've we've seen what disarming the people, what happened to the people that surrendered their arms once they take the guns. I mean, you, you have, they basically take away your right to defend yourself and they take away that right to stop the tyranny. So on the, on the second installment of that would be the establishment of essentially fascist world government under the direct control of a capitalist elite. So here again, we have Mr. Bloomberg himself would just be one example of the capitalist elite that I'm offering in this installment. 
he wants to basically, you can just go with the Second Amendment. He wants to disarm America or maybe even reinstall the UN, the UN arms uh, treaty agreement. Maybe he wants to reenact that. Um, on top of that, it would be the UN would also have a, that would be the one world government. We would be going and being in compliance with the UN Agenda 2030. But I think what's happening is, is that we've got, you know, they're, they're running into a problem because you got half the country that they're trying to run. They're trying to direct traffic on a UN Agenda 2030. And then I think they're the other half of the country, the other states, whether they're still blue or they're still red, they're trying to run those on a 2021. So it's either half the countries, half the countries in step with the UN Agenda 2030, or the other half is on in step with UN Agenda 21. So there you go. You've got more of an accelerated, I think, in the states that are that are blue already, but then you have a you have a you know a bit of a a bit of a postponement to a 2030 and particular fascist governments you know of course that's also affecting the first amendment you're going to end up pulling those first amendment rights in terms of also like here with you I'm doing social media and the freedom of speech that's being curtailed that's being suppressed numbers you can see youtubers numbers being suppressed you can see youtubers views being suppressed they want to curtail or they want to crush these freedoms by via the first amendment and the second amendment and here it is we have all these capital elite jumping into this particular race and not to mention you have tom steyer there's another example i mean they know exactly what what the meaning of globalization is and you know to keep things on target or to keep the cycle going that is why they are in the race and then maybe they can legally spend they, they can keep keep spending these billionaires money to keep to keep jabbing at president trump that is their pull that is the mo i think for because michael bloomberg i mean what are his chances really does he actually think he's going to win i don't think so and what is Tom Steyer? I don't think so. You know, you still, as much as they don't want to, they still have to deal with flyover country. And what I mean is anything outside of New York and California is what is considered flyover country. So, to tag out on this particular segment of Black Spring. So, what do you think? Are we closer to, are we actually closer to an acquittal? Are we going to see more delay and postponement, postponement within an internal conflicts and internal stifling inside of the GOP? I mean, represent. I mean, Collins, Mitt Romney. We got a lot of players, a lot of rhinos. We got a lot of people that should not. That are just totally defectors. We got a lot of defectors still hanging around the the GOP. And I appreciate you for tuning into this segment of Black Spring with Autumn. And please, as always, let me know what you think in the comments with your concerns, your likes, and even better if you can subscribe because we are dealing with heavy suppression in this fascist, fascist government measures to suppress conservatives all over. So. Thank you for tuning into this segment of Black Spring with Autumn.